China is one country that's known for breaking barriers and doing what's often seen as the impossible, so it's no surprise they've done it again. In the country's vast landscapes, decades of desertification have brought intensified dust storms, crop failures, and economic hardship. As a result, China has been actively fighting this desertification on its land. That brings us to the question, what's the world's most effective solution to curb a growing desert? Well, it's not as high-tech as you might think. Rather, it's a piece of straw and a grid. China wouldn't be the same if it didn't come up with a brilliant solution, and we're about to find out what that is. First, let's figure out why China embarked on this solution to their ever-growing desert problem. So, in 2000, almost 30% of China's total land area had fallen victim to the clutches of desertification. In essence, lots of arable land degraded into dry, barren ground. And a shocking thing that contributed to this crisis was the Gobi Desert. At that time, it was expanding at a rate of about 1,390 square miles per year, roughly the size of Rhode Island being swallowed by sand every 12 months. Unfortunately, the effects didn't just affect places far away. Dust storms, called Huangsha, regularly took over cities like Beijing. This phenomenon significantly reduced visibility, covering entire streets in fine sand. Also, one of the worst hit areas was the Kubuchi Desert in Inner Mongolia. Stretching over 7,180 square miles, Kubuchi wasn't always a struggling ecosystem. However, decades of overgrazing and deforestation ruined the land. What remained by the late 20th century was just sand dunes and dust for miles. Entire rural communities on the desert's edge were forced to relocate as farmland dried up and winds carried sand into homes. Rivers, once supporting agriculture, shrank or disappeared altogether. Additionally, transportation routes like railways and highways were threatened with being buried by drifting dunes. The situation seemed hopeless. So what did China do? China's leadership realized that this was more than a simple environmental issue. Rather, it was an existential threat to food security, economic development, and regional stability. According to official data from 2016 to 2020, the country turned about 21.7 million acres of desertified land into green areas. Of course, the Chinese didn't stop there. In 2022, they planted another 9.3 million acres of forest. And in 2023, China went even further. More than 9.8 million acres of degraded land got covered with trees. It's so amazing how China is actively trying to plant more trees and reduce its desertification issues. Amazingly, they have an entire day dedicated to tree planting. It's known as the National Tree Planting Day, and it's on the 12th of March. This activity basically aligns with China's plan to plant millions of trees within a decade. On this day, lots of ordinary people head out to dry lands to put a new plant into the ground. It's a really cool event. The population actively participates in saving the country from desertification. Wonderful, don't you think? Now, trees are great and all, but the thing is, sand can move. All those billions of tons of tiny particles spread across the desert aren't really held in place by anything. That's why the Chinese are planting lots of trees. Their roots stop the sand from moving, and the desert keeps shrinking instead of spreading. Sand, unlike soil, doesn't stay put. Even so, a lot of plants just can't grow in these conditions. Either their roots get exposed by wind, or they'll end up buried under heaps of sand. Generally, the plants don't last very long. And don't forget that there's nothing stopping the intense winds in the deserts, which is why the sand keeps moving. It gets pretty breezy, and such harsh winds damage plants as well. Many plants that are planted in sandy areas still need at least some nutrients to grow, but sand dunes and arid places often don't have much to offer. That's why the building blocks of China's green walls just wither away. It's pretty obvious that simply planting trees was not enough, so the next phase in China's anti-desertification strategy involved engineering the sand itself. 
I know the concept of engineering sand sounds a bit crazy. In fact, it sounds absurd, but that's what the Chinese did. As early as the 1950s, China started using something known as straw checkerboard barriers. What are they? Well, they're an almost foolproof way to escape desertification. People in China who really know their stuff are using an ingenious trick for planting in desert conditions, and that's straw. It's such a creative idea. Let me explain how it works. So crops like wheat, rice, or similar crops ripen. And once they're ripe, they develop two parts, the ears, the stuff on top, and every other part of the plant. As soon as it's harvest time, the ears are separated from the rest of the plant. The ears are used for food, but our focus is on all the other stuff of the plant. That's the leaves, stem, you get the picture. It usually stays in the field to dry. That's how we get straw. It's basically dead, dried up plants, and China has loads of it. As of 2024, there were more than 74 million acres of rice fields, producing over 207 million tons of rice. According to the International Rice Research Institute, the ratio of rice to straw is roughly one to one. So we can say that in 2024, the country harvested over 200 million tons of straw just from rice. Overall, China collects about 1 billion tons of straw every year. Now, you might definitely be thinking, how will straw help fix the desertification? Well, first, it's placed on sand dunes and other dry areas in a grid pattern to turn into something like a huge checkerboard from trenches dug in the sand. The straw cells form sort of a natural barrier, so plants that can withstand the harshness of the desert are planted into each straw cell. As time passes, the straw begins to decompose and break down, forming a sort of natural fertilizer and turning the sand dunes green with grass. Now, these cells won't automatically turn the desert into a lush green forest, but they'll seriously boost the chances of the desert plants surviving. When properly installed, straw grids can block nearly all sand movement, sometimes as much as 99%, and serve as wind barriers that help fragile plants survive. This method is a game changer. However, it isn't an easy process, and it's definitely not cheap. Plus, those involved have to experience the heat of the desert and its harsh weather conditions. It takes a lot of manual labor, and it's incredibly intense. So China decided to get creative. Instead of laying small straw bundles, workers now use long straw ropes. These are made in factories, transported to the site, and placed using machines. The process is 60% more efficient. Each rope lasts up to six years, which is twice as long as older methods. Fun fact, they're reusable too. Well, only if they don't degrade. Pull one end and the entire rope slides cleanly out of the sand. China has also developed machines that dig trenches, lay the straw, and cover it with sand all in one pass. These machines can do the work of four to six people. There's also a mixed approach. Trenches are dug and filled by hand, while a machine presses and buries the straw. Straw grids are not just a theory. They've been proven in extreme conditions. One of the best examples is the Baotou Lanzhou Railway. Built in 1958, it stretches through the Tengar Desert. Many believed it would be buried in sand within decades, but it is still standing strong, all thanks to straw. The technique won a National Science Award in 1988. By 1994, the Zongwei Sand Fixation Forest Farm was known worldwide as a breakthrough in desert control. Other countries began adopting the method. China later used the same strategy to build a highway through the desert. That highway opened in 2022, connecting Qingdongxia and Zhongwei. About 76 miles of it passed through harsh desert terrain. Straw grids, stone barriers, and gravel strips help protect the road. Tourist stops have been added along the route. The same straw methods now protect other major highways, including one that crosses the Taklamakan Desert, often called the Sea of Death. In short, China is tackling desertification with determination. From planting trees to developing advanced machines to laying down millions of straw grids, they are not backing down and they are making real progress. However, it quickly became clear that straw grids and tree planting were not enough. The real battle 
had to begin beneath the surface. And that's where some things called bio-crusts entered the scene. Bio-crusts are tiny, living communities that form a thin layer across the surface of sand and bind sand particles together. As a result, they convert loose, shifting dunes into stable land. In the wild, these crusts take decades to form on their own, but China wasn't prepared to wait that long. So to speed up the process, scientists at institutions like the Xinjiang Institute of Ecology and Geography and Inner Mongolia Agricultural University developed lab-grown inoculants. Their innovative bio-crusts quickly take over the surface of sand dunes when sprayed on them. It's a wonder how they created something that typically takes years to develop in mere months. Moreover, they're super effective. They reduced wind erosion by up to 80% even without vegetation. They also boost the soil's ability to lock in moisture. Most importantly, they lay the biological foundation for desert plants to germinate and take root, something that's virtually impossible in untreated, shifting sand. Besides, there's so much more that biocrusts do. One is that they don't need any irrigation. Plus, it's pretty easy to maintain them. They're even self-replicable under suitable conditions. Thanks to their success, China has scaled up the use of biocrusts in large desert zones, including the Kubuchi and Mu'us deserts. However, it's essential to remember that despite the promising results from experimental methods like biochar, not to be confused with biocrusts, it's still not widely adopted across China. But once it sails through, it could become a global solution. Internationally, China is now sharing this technology with African nations, particularly those in the Sahel, where desertification seriously threatens the countries. While straw checkerboards provide immediate relief, biocrusts ensure long-term stability, proving that sometimes the smallest organisms can make the biggest difference. So we can see that the Chinese aren't just benefiting from their crazy creative innovations, but the world is too. Now, some might think that China had gotten all the solutions to solving their desertification crisis, but they still weren't done. Surface level solutions like tree planting and straw grids could only achieve so much. And when they realized this, the Chinese upped their game. This prompted researchers to explore a radical new approach transforming the sand itself. In test plots like the Ulaanbo Desert in Inner Mongolia, scientists from institutions like Chongqing Jiaotong University tested something involving the burying of plant biomass underground. This biomass was mixed with a biodegradable cellulose binding agent that's gotten from plant matter. Acting like a natural glue, the agent bound sand particles together and created small air pockets and organic matter within the sand. It simulated the structure of real soil. The transformation was completely remarkable. What was once barren, shifting terrain turned into a sponge-like, semi-structured substrate capable of retaining water, resisting erosion, and supporting plant growth. In field tests, crops such as tomatoes, peppers, corn, and even sunflowers grow with minimal irrigation. And that was impossible before. The extent of Chinese creativity is simply astounding. Laboratory studies backed these results. Experiments using biochar, a form of charcoal, and carboxymethylcellulose, CMC, showed that the soil's water holding capacity increased by up to 36%. But that's not all. Soil moisture retention rose by 30%, and the soil's aggregate stability, which is how well the soil clumps together, improved dramatically compared to untreated desert sand. More importantly, this engineered desert soil proved capable of sustaining itself. After one or two growing seasons, plots began to regenerate microbial life, gradually building up their own organic content. As long as groundwater use is managed sustainably, this method allows for continued agricultural productivity in formerly dead landscapes. 
Today, this approach is aimed at being implemented at scale in several desert regions, including Ulanbo, Kubuchi, and parts of Xinjiang. It's expected to work in harmony with other methods like straw checkerboards, tree planting, and biocrust inoculation, offering a comprehensive solution for transforming sand into soil. The entire world can see the amount of work China has put into solving their desertification problem, and honestly, we have to give them their flowers. They're doing amazing work. Over the past decade, China's battle against desertification has delivered real, visible results. Through reforestation efforts like the Kubuchi restoration and the Three North Shelter Belt, China has recovered approximately 70 million acres of previously degraded land. These restored areas now serve as natural defenses against desert expansion and have become safe havens for native plants and wildlife. One of the clearest signs of success is the sharp drop in dust storms. Northern cities like Beijing, once choked by yellow dust, saw storm frequency fall by 20% between 2009 and 2014. Satellite images and air quality data confirm the trend. The air is much cleaner and the land is also more stable. In addition, a simple yet crucial tool that's made a huge impact is the straw cell method. They do plenty. For one, they reduce wind erosion and trap moisture. Again, they create microhabitats where native plants can take root. And let's not forget that the straw also provides shade and slows down evaporation, which helps young seedlings to survive. People around the world now use this method. From West Africa to Central Asia, it seems like everyone's looking to copy China's success. Furthermore, the benefits aren't just environmental, they're also economic. In places like the Kubuchi Desert, former barren lands support vibrant green economies. Places like Kubuchi are now tourist destinations that bring in over a million visitors yearly, and that has undoubtedly contributed to the country's GDP. Together, the restored areas in Kubuchi and Mu'us have generated more than 500 billion yuan, about $77.6 billion USD, in ecosystem services. However, it's a cumulated project value. It accounts for improvements through cleaner air, carbon storage, fertile soil, and better flood control. These numbers basically tell us that restoring nature isn't a cost, it's a long-term investment, with big returns, let me add. China's broad experience shapes global strategies today. Countries in Africa and Asia work with Chinese experts to use methods like straw checkerboards, bio crusts, and many others. These partnerships also help other regions fight the war against desertification. In essence, China has proven that deserts aren't dead. With the right tools and long-term commitment, they can be brought back to life. What do you think about China's desert transformation? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos like this.